Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to another Railway Empire video. We're going to do the uh, Northern Passage, and we're going to do it again with the engineer and with our pass-through rural stations. So, uh, for a bunch of reasons, one, I wanted to see if it was just a fluke that it just happened to fit the Rocky Mountain mining so well. But let's look at this one real quick. Connect 100,000 people. That second one there. By 1872, we have to have a quarterly income of 800,000. That's actually pretty good growth considering that we only have 500,000 to start with. So what we're going to do here, and again, because we only have 500,000 to start with, we're going to use our pass-through rural stations, but we're only going to build small railway stations out there to connect to the um, uh, rural um, uh, farms and mines and whatever we're picking up. So we're going to start out here in our, our headquarters in Miles City and you can see it has that line that runs off kind of off the edge of the map. I think that represents traffic coming into this uh, region from the east. And the whole idea of this is it's sort of a passage, a way of moving uh, people and mail and what have you uh, across uh, the map here. And in fact one of our goals is to put the uh, Yellowstone office in Gardner, which is near Old Faithful Geyser. And we're basically saying you need to build up that area to support the uh, tourist attraction, basically, of, of the Old Faithful. So um, this is going to look very much like the last one. And if you haven't seen that, I'd advise, I would encourage you to go watch that. I'll, I'll put a link to it here. But... Um, we're basically, again, using our pass-through. The difference being that instead of using a train station in the middle most of the time, for a while, and I say for a while because you'll see we're going to do something, I think, pretty interesting a little bit later. But for a while, we're going to use our, our small station as our pass-through. We'll have a little bit of traffic uh, tie-ups here as uh, trains come into that midpoint and kind of wait on one another. But uh, you'll, you'll see how it works. Um, so here we go, city to warehouse, or city to rural station to city, back to rural station. And our goal, of course, again, is full trains. What we're trying to do is run trains that are full. And honestly, we don't care whether it's passengers or mail or freight. And this is an interesting scenario because there's a, a passenger requirement, there's a freight requirement, and there's a big a mail requirement in this one. So you gotta be able to do it all. But particularly at the beginning here, we don't care what we're carrying, we just want to make money. And we want full trains. So that's why we're using this technique. So we're going to do um, do one here that's going to go up to, uh, from Billings up to the cattle, and then turn back around and go back over to Gardner so that we can connect up Billings and Gardner and pick up the cattle on the way back to Billings to feed the meat industry in Billings. And this is going to go on and on a bit for so, and I'm going to just fast forward through it. This, this video is not to show you how to lay these tracks. There's lots of videos for that. I uh, just want to show you the strategy you need to use in order to get a perfect score. And I really should say, a strategy you can use to get a perfect score. There are many ways to play this game and many good ways to play. And I'm sure some of you have better ways to do it than this. But this is one way to attack this, what is considered a hard mission or hard scenario. And I know from experience and from reading comments from other people, uh, that early 800,000 K quarterly profit is really tough when you only start with $500,000. Um, but here's here's a way to to get her done, as they might say, as we might say. You can see at this point we're our, we've already gone all the way out. We've brought in Idaho Falls with a beer meat line to Gardner, and now we're going to do a meat to meat line between Nampa and uh, Idaho Falls, and they're both. Uh, um, meat industry cities, so uh, this one will be a really good line to feed uh, cattle to both of those cities. And we got a task completed, I think we'd hit, we, uh, as soon as we'd made that connection there, we actually hit 100,000 and we were about to hit it through just basic city growth anyway. Because another nice thing about this strategy is you actually do get some city growth 
because you because you have those beer meat lines and you are keeping keeping them supplied with something that's coming from the middle. So uh, there you can see the gardener through logs over to uh, Idaho Falls and back, and then we've got Idaho Falls over to Nampa with uh, meat uh, a cattle industry in the middle. So let's move ahead a little bit more. So we can see we finished our first task and we're about halfway. We've got about half what we need in quarterly profit. So we just need to keep growing. It's November of 1870, uh, our first year. We need to finish by June of next year, June of 1871, in order to stay on the track for a perfect score. So the next thing we're going to do is a little bit interesting. We're going to run a line from... Um, Idaho Falls up to Spokane because uh, Spokane is one of our goals is to uh, be able to connect Spokane into our network. So um, we're going to do it through uh, the logs that are right there in the middle. But we're going to, now that we're starting to make some money, we've got a little economy going now. We've got, uh, see, one, two, three, four. We have five cities hooked up now and five rural industries. So we're starting to make some money. And what we're going to do here is switch. Instead of using small stations to uh, as our pass-through, we're now going to use the small warehouse. We've got this beautiful new functionality, the small warehouse. We're going to use the small warehouse, and you'll see um, reasons why later, but it's the same price as a regular train station, but it has more functionality. And because it's got the catchment area, it, it can, of course, pick up the um, logs just like a train station would. So it's in effect, it's a, a, a regular size train station there with some added features, which uh, you'll see later on how we can use those. So we've got a, uh, um, a beer producer in Spokane connected through the logs to a meat producer in Idaho Falls. So it's going to give us a ni another nice beer meat line. We'll get some decent city growth and we'll certainly have some goods that are moving back and forth on a nice long line. Now the goods don't make any more money because of the length, but our passengers and mail will make more money if we carry them longer distances. So um, that's the idea there. So the key point there is we're now switching up and we're going to start using warehouses as our pass-through station. So by setting this up, of course, we have now uh, satisfied another objective, which is to hook um, Spokane into our system. Now we've got a connection bonus up here for Missoula, and that's just very good timing because now that we've got Spokane up there and it's got a beer, we've got wheat and um, veggies right up there. So all we have to do is put a warehouse in between them, the small warehouse, make sure it's... Uh, accepting wheat and veggies, and we can run our pass through through that warehouse between Spokane and Missoula, get the bonus for Missoula, and have a beautiful line going with uh, wheat and veggies being carried back and forth uh, between the two cities. And of course, uh, Spokane will need a lot of wheat because it's a beer producer. So again, this is going to be another really good solid line that will promote city growth and keep, keep us with a bunch of... Uh, Nice full trains running. And you'll notice that we're using small stations on these endpoints in the cities every time. And I'm using point-to-point -point connections with, uh, with of course, the pass-through has no uh, junction at all. A normal pass-through that just goes uh, straight through like that doesn't even need any, any signals or switches or anything because the train just come in and drive on the right and take the right platform and come back the other way and take the other platform. And um, I'm using the point to point uh, because I want to use small stations because again, one of the keys to playing this game well is when you put, it's not how much you spend, it's when you spend it. So we are keeping our expenses as low as we can keep them in the early going here um, 
even though we may think, you know, like uh, maybe we want, we want to add another station or add another uh, line or exp expand the station or whatever, but there's no point in spending the money until you need to. And who knows, we may never come back to Missoula. This may be it. Uh, that one small station is more than enough. So, um, so here we go again, another city to city line, just like all the rest of them. So let's move on. So we see here that we're at the end of March. Our last quarter, we were almost uh, at 800. So we're waiting on this to click over. There we go. There, we've hit our goal of 800,000. We hit it in uh, March of 1871. We had one more quarter to spare. Uh, we could have gone one more quarter and done it next quarter and still hit our perfect score. So that's pretty good. Very, very happy with that. And look how far out we've expanded. We've started way over there in Miles City. We've got Miles City, Billings, uh, Gardner, Idaho Falls, Nampa, and Spokane, and Missoula in our network right now. And I lost count. How many was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got seven cities hooked up. Every one of them, city to city lines, uh, running passengers and mail, and running through a rural station and picking up one or more goods going all the way through. So we're off to a really good start here. And I wanted to put an industry in in um, Gardner to help make sure it grows, but there just isn't anything available yet that uh, is worth building. So I just kind of held off on that. And so we're just going to look for more places to go out and do, again, more and more of these um, city to city um, pass through deals. But this time coming through a warehouse that's picking up a um, some freight uh, automatically for us. Now we can see here we've almost hit our passenger goal without even thinking about it. That freight one will be tough because we're only at 620 some out of 5,000. So we'll have to really grow to hit that freight goal. And then the biggie is our, our goal for the mail, which will be coming up later. There it is, 2 million quarterly revenue from transporting mail. That's, that's pretty big. And I'm just double checking everything. We gotta get express lines again, so we're gonna make sure we get those. We gotta go all the way to Kingman, no big deal. We're expanding and expanding and expanding all over the place with this kind of an approach. All right, so we're coming upon uh, a very interesting situation here. And this is going to demonstrate why we have switched to using warehouses, the small warehouse, as our pass-through vehicle. Because now this line right here was originally set up with a regular train station to be a pa or a small one maybe. Uh, I don't remember which. Regular, I guess. Uh, to be a pass-through for corn between Nampa and Idaho Falls. But I want to use, I want it to contribute to something else. Um, so what we've got here, we've got a situation where we've got the corn right there and very nearby we have the, uh, we have sugar just down to the south, closer to, toward uh, Salt Lake City, we have sugar. Well, I'd love to have the sugar go to Nampa and Idaho Falls and I'd love to have this corn to go back down to Salt Lake City, which we hooked up while we were going fast forward there, and Idaho Falls, which, of course, we have hooked up. Well, yeah, so I want the sugar and the corn going to all those four cities, is what I'm trying to say. So what we're going to do here is take advantage. I've actually flipped that out and took out the uh, station and replaced it with a, a warehouse that can hold corn and sugar, and then we'll have to fix the route because the trains still have their routes going between city to city, but they don't know about the warehouse because it used to be a station. So we'll go in here and, and yes, I am trainable protagonist cast. I want you to know. I want you to see what I do here. Uh, I forgot about it at first, but then I'll, I, then I'll think about it. Let's go back and start over. 
going to select a line and then I'm going to copy the line. So I'm going to copy the instructions for that line. Then I'm going to go down to the next train that I want to change and I'm going to hit paste or insert the rail line and it now changes it to the line I just copied. I'll go to the next one, do the same thing, paste it in there or insert it. Then I'll go back to the fourth one, our fourth and final one on this line and insert that and now all four of those lines are identical. They all have City, warehouse, city, warehouse. Beautiful. So um, I, didn't, I did not even know how to use that. Protagonist cast told me you ought to be using that. So I looked it up and figured it out. And yes, I should have been using it all along. It's excellent. So here's the, now back, back to, that was kind of an aside, but let's go back to the main point of this. Now we have this warehouse with um, corn and sugar turned on, but of course it can only get corn. We've got one down here that's going to also have corn and sugar turned on, but it can only get sugar. So, of course, what we're going to do is shuttle goods between the two. And this is where warehouses uh, beat uh, stations because you couldn't store anything at a station in this game. But you can in the warehouse. So we're going to have two warehouses talking to each other across this line that you see being built. And that's going to allow us to shuttle goods back and forth between the warehouses. In fact, I'll stay here for a moment and explain how to do the shuttling in case it's, uh, you know, you haven't caught it from a couple of the other videos I've done. Uh, it is sort of a new, new thing for us. So uh, we'll make sure there's a, a supply tower between them. And then we're going to set up our line to say, okay, at that, well, actually we're going to do that. What did I do wrong? Oh yeah, I've got to turn it on. You got to have it turned on. You got to have the two goods that you want turned on in both both places, or you can't set up your line properly. So now we're going to set up a line. That's the corn up to the sugar. So that first one, you can't take the corn. You can't take the corn back. I said that incorrectly. It's, it's the sugar up to the corn. On the first side, you can't take the corn back. You just brought it down. And on the other side, you can't take the sugar back. You just brought it up. So as long as you say, don't take the, uh, the good that you just brought back out, it'll just shuttle. It'll take corn from the top, bring it to the bottom, take sugar from the bottom, take it up to the top. Beautiful. So now we'll have corn and sugar in both of those locations. And when we set up our line now, we're going to set up a city to city line between Salt Lake City and Gardner. And it will be able, and I think I said Idaho Falls earlier. Gardner is what I meant. Remember, we've got to grow Gardner, so we're kind of focusing on it. But we're going to piggyback on a line that already exists, and we're going to set up a line between Salt Lake City and that warehouse that holds two goods and Gardner. And now we'll be able to use a pass through through this station. And uh, again, we're using it like a Y intersection because they're going to go in and come right back out the way they came in. And uh, we'll have a line running up from um, Salt Lake City. And right here, I actually made a little goof. Uh, watch what I do here. Uh, I sp Well, did I? Yeah, I did. I made a little goof. I built a a tunnel or bridge, whichever one I ended up with, that I didn't need. And the reason is I could have, if I'd done just a traditional two-platform uh, hookup down there, and instead of uh, having a, a dedicated line like this, I could have shared that track across the bridge and then looped it over to the other side. It would have saved a whole bunch of money. So that, that was a goof up on my part. I, and I caught it later as I was playing. I looked at it and realized, duh, why, why did you do that? But anyway, it, this works just fine. The dedicated line is just perfectly fine. It works just beautifully. And now we'll have a line that can go from Salt Lake City, grab some whatever's in Salt Lake City, like that cloth or um, uh, passengers or mail, go up to the warehouse, top off with corn and or sugar, run up to Gardner, dump it all out, and repeat that process going back the other way. So uh, beautiful thing there, and that's why you want to use the warehouses because they can exchange goods and you can get multiple goods on, your, um, on a single stop.
And you notice we just kept, kept pounding. We just kept building and building and building more and more city to city lines passing through warehouses to uh, pick up goods. Now here is an even better example of the reason we're using warehouses rather than train stations because down here we're getting ready to hook up Milford to Kingman which and of course we need to get Kingman in our system as one of our tasks and it's going to go to a warehouse that's automatically picking up corn but nearby are both fruit and wheat so we are going to set up our pass-through line from Milford through the warehouse to Kingman to pick up the corn but we're also going to run lines from the fruit into the warehouse and the wheat into the warehouse so now that really is a pass-through warehouse with three items in it rather than one and uh, that should again give us a really good full trains running back and forth through here it also helps us because remember we've got to haul 5,000 freight on oh, Bart right here I I realized I had built bridges for no reason so I redid that line I just lead them both and redid it because there's no reason to have a bridge out there in the middle of nowhere like that but anyway back to what I was saying we can now uh, we've got the pass-through line with three goods in it but we're actually shipping um, there's an additional shipping step. We're taking the wheat and moving it to the warehouse. We're taking the fruit and moving it to the warehouse. And that's gonna help us work on our goal of, of uh, hauling 5,000 freight because we're gonna get double credit. That wheat, when we pick it up, we're gonna get credit for moving it to the warehouse. And then later on, a train is gonna come through, especially the one going toward Kingman where the beer uh, factory is, the brewery. Uh, and we're going to get credit for it again. So that's a great way to build up your uh, freight uh, count if you need to by shipping to the warehouse, then picking up from the warehouse and shipping to uh, the final destination. So again, here's, here's a um, pass-through uh, warehouse with uh, three items in it, corn, wheat, and fruit. And you saw that task completed message. Of course, that's because we hooked up Kingman into our system. We know that we have to have five express trains running. At least that's an optional task. And we want all our optional tasks because, again, we're looking for a perfect score here. So what we're going to do here is set up a, our first passenger mail line between Cheyenne and our headquarters up here in Miles City. So uh, we're going to run a point-to-point -point line directly from Miles City to Cheyenne and... Um, a passenger only, as I said, and we're going to work toward our research toward getting the Reno, which is the fastest uh, train and the express train uh, in this uh, time period. So um, basically, this is as simple as it sounds. We're <laughs> just running a line down here to Cheyenne, uh, going to make it a nice, straight, clean path and um, passenger mail only in the hopes that it will eventually uh, become an express train now we don't even have the reno yet we're, we're still running baldwin's uh, in fact uh, it's worth more mentioning we're still running the, the cheapest first train we got the baldwin uh, partly because i love the baldwin it's one of my favorite trains uh just from other games and what what little bit i know about railroad history i love the baldwin so um we're running that uh, still, and so we don't. We know we're not going to get an express train here yet, but we can make a good money on it as a passenger mail line and have it ready so that as soon as we have the conditions ripe for getting an express line, um, we can get one. And right here, this just had to be a defect. I know that station is kind of special because it had got that line running off it, but it was really hard to build the line. See, it just 
see how the line is disappearing and cutting off and everything else. I could not come out from that station and build the line. So I decided to do the opposite. I just went out, out there a little ways and built the line back to it. That worked fine. I, this could have been user error, but whatever. So I had to <laughs> go from the opposite direction to get it to work, and now I can drag it down, build the line. This will be passenger mail only, as I said. We'll try to get some good uh, conductors and stuff on it, but basically we'll just let it run as is until the time comes that we think we can get an express line. So quick status check, we're about halfway to our goal of 5,000 freight. It's uh, middle of 1872. We've actually got till June 1876 to finish that one. So we're in great shape there, looking good on our freight. Now why? Because because of this approach, we're hauling passengers, car, uh, mail, and freight all the time. And you also notice we were uh, making good progress. We're up to about a $1.3 million quarterly uh, pro quarterly revenue on our um, mail carrying as well. So as we keep expanding, we just keep keep increasing how much freight we're carrying, how much mail, how many passengers, etc. And I decide to leave nothing to doubt here on the freight. So what we're doing here is building a pass-through warehouse from Billings up to, I forget the name of the city up there to the north. Um, as soon as it shows on the screen, we'll get it. But anyway, what, what's going to happen here is this is going to be a more traditional pass-through warehouse and I intentionally kept it away from any of the goods because I, I wanted to actually haul all of the goods into this warehouse. So you can see I've got it set up to take cattle, which I don't typically put in a warehouse, and cotton, which isn't even needed by anybody yet, but I'm just making sure we haul the freight by hauling freight into that warehouse. So we're going to take uh, corn and sugar and cotton and vegetables and cattle and haul them all to that warehouse. Then we're going to have a pass-through warehouse set up with uh, Billings and Great Falls. There it is, Great Falls. And they're going to move those goods, some of those goods, back and forth. I don't think the cotton ever gets used. But um, the idea is that we want to bump up our freight and make sure that we get those freight numbers, even though we are in good shape. But I just wanted to make sure we knocked that out uh, as quickly as we could. And there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, this is just a classic pass-through warehouse. And uh, I did use the super warehouse there because it's going to have a lot of traffic and also because we can afford it now. We can, we're, the money's coming in uh, very strong and, and we can afford it.
And here we can see we are closing in on the freight number and on our mail number. And how are we doing this? Again, just by expanding and expanding and expanding. That's all we're doing is really using the exact same technique over and over again. And here we've got this one uh, passenger mail line running trying to get our uh, express. And I'll tell you the truth, when I was playing this, I didn't realize at that point uh, when we saw that checkpoint, uh, we actually had three out of our five express lines. Now, they come and go, so you can't count on them, but I didn't even realize we had any at that point, to tell you the truth. And what I decided to do here was just kind of for fun uh, and to get more express lines and make a bunch of money. We're going to run an express line all the way from Kingman to Raton. Raton. Now, why? Uh, because I wanted to. That's the biggest reason. And because Kingman and Raton are my two favorite cities on this map. Because they're two cities that were introduced to me. I didn't even know they existed until I played Ray Railway Empire. And some of you may know from, I forget which video it was, I mentioned it. But um, my wife and I took a vacation in the southwest um, this year and uh, we actually stopped in both Kingman and Raton. We went and specifically because I'd seen them on this game. So we, we stopped in Raton and saw the train station and saw a super highway of, of a railroad track. And we went to Kingman and went to uh, a little train museum they have there. It's a display of a, uh, of a train out in a park and uh, you kind of check that out. But anyway, those are my two favorite cities on this map now. So what we're going to do is hook the two of them together in a long uh, express line with a tunnel blasting through the mountains. Uh, so that uh, people can have a nice quick trip from Raton to Kingman. And, um, and it will eventually pop express lines for us as well as the line from Cheyenne to um, uh, Miles City. And keep in mind, we have to have five express lines. Uh, we're only running six trains between Miles City and uh, Cheyenne, so it uh, would be a bit ambitious to hope that we would get all five on that one line. So it's nice to have another long line here that has a good chance of uh, having express trains on it as well. So here you can see we are really close to both the uh, uh, revenue goal uh, for the mail and for the total freight carried. So we are closing in on the end of this thing. And it's only May of 1873, so we're only in our fourth year. And now remember, we have to buy our buddy Jonathan Johnson. I've actually already purchased some of him. Uh, an analyst popped up and I used the analyst to reduce his price and bought a big chunk, about 30 some percent. Then I had another purchase. So we're about to buy him out and uh, get him out of the way. And we're really re there. We finished our freight revenue and we're very, very close on the quarterly mail. We should get that next quarter. And of course, the key here again is we continue to expand. Now we can buy out the remainder of Jonathan Johnson and say goodbye to him. We're gonna, we're just gonna liquidate him. That's my favorite thing to do is just uh, get the opponent out of the way, clean up the map. Now things are much cleaner and neater. And uh, he's gone and all we need now are our express lines and uh, to finish off our quarterly uh, revenue from mail goal. And if I had this one to do over again, I would not have made that purchase just yet. And I'll explain why, and you'll see why in a moment. And by purchase, I mean purchasing out the general, buying out the general. I would not have done that just yet because we haven't quite hit our five express lines at this point. So again, we've got two open tasks, express lines, which are optional, and the final target of hitting two million a quarter. It's June, it's the end of June now, so as soon as we hit to the very end of June, that's going to be the end of a quarter, and we would anticipate we're going to hit that goal, but we don't have our express lines yet, so 
I wish I'd held on to the general. I'd left, wish I'd left him out there for a bit, but thank goodness we got a task completed. I think it was that train right there as it landed, got an express rating, and right before we got our uh, quarter finish and got the $2 million revenue goal, so uh, that gives us, ta-da, a president rating, 10 out of 10 fulfilled tasks, 20 out of 20 on timing, a perfect score, a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing this one. I hope uh, you see something in it that uh, can help your game. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.